Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will look at some questions to help you to understand the calculation for intravenous bolus and infusion administration. First, pause the video and try to solve the questions and then play the video for my explanations. Let's begin. This question is related to intravenous bolus dose. You will need to plot the graph using semi-log paper to solve the questions. So let's pause the video and try the questions. This is the graph you should get. So let's look at the hidden information in this graph. So first of all, if you remember, when we calculate the gradient for this straight line, you should able to find the Ke. So this is the elimination rate constant. Once you can find this answer, you manage to convert this to T half. Remember this equation, T half is equal to ln 2 divided by Ke. So that is a half-life for elimination. The next information we can find from the graph is by extrapolating the graph over here into the y-intercept. So once you find this y-intercept over here, you can find the initial concentration. So that is the information we can identify from the graph. So let's move on to the calculation steps. I will show you how to solve all the questions. For question number one, we need to calculate the gradient. So I'm going to use this equation ln C2 minus ln C1, T2 minus T1. You can pick any concentration or any time point from the table. In this case, I'm going to use the example ln 2.6 minus ln 61 over 8 minus 0 0.5. So the value I obtain will be 0 0.96 minus 4.11 divided by 7.5. Your answer for Ke should be 0 0.42. So we solve question 1. The second question is about the half-life for elimination. T half is equal to ln 2 divided by Ke. That will be 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.42. So the half-life of elimination should be 1.65 hour. Okay, for question number 3. You need to extrapolate the graph. Just use your ruler placed on the straight line and look at the y-intercept. You should get the value approximately 76. Depend on how you read the graph. So this is my estimation. If your answer is slightly deviated from mine, that will be also acceptable. Now proceed to question number four. You need to identify the volume. To make it simple, since I have the initial concentration, I'm going to use C equal to dose divided by volume. From the question number 3, the initial concentration is 76. Divide the dose 300. From here, you can find the volume. The volume you should get is around 3.94 liter. Okay, for question number 5, you need to identify the concentration at 12 hours later. So T is equal to 12. Using this equation for IV bolus, EKT, the concentration, you need to identify the dose is 300, volume is 3.94, E negative K, K is 0 0.42 multiplied by 12. Solving this equation, your concentration at T equal to 12 will be 0 0.49. So that's it for question 1. You can proceed to the next question. This question is very similar to the previous questions, except you have to calculate the area under the curve using the trapezoidal rule. Now you can pause the video, try the question, and I will explain to you later. This is the graph you should get. And again, by calculating the gradient of the straight line, you're able to find the elimination rate constant and the next thing is by extrapolating the graph the straight line to touch the y-intercept you were able to find the initial drug concentration the next thing I want to remind you is about the trapezoidal rule we are going to calculate the area under the curve so basically the concept is by cutting all this time point into tiny little pieces and add all the area together. So I'm going to use this ex example. Let's say I'm going to calculate the area 
for time point 3 to 4 hour and then the equation will be half C1 C2 so what is C1 and C2 that will be the concentration over here C1 and C2 and then multiply by the height the height will be the time so in this case there will be one so by adding all these tiny pieces together you were able to find the AUC I will show you the calculation in the next slide the first part is you have to calculate the gradient that will be negative ke equal to ln c2 minus ln c1 over t2 t1 over here i'm going to use ln 0.2 minus ln 7.7 .7 divided by 8 minus 0.5 so my answer will be 0.49 for the second part you need to find the half-life for elimination this is simple 0.693 divided by 0.49 your answer will be 1.41 okay for part 3 is about the y-intercept so my y-intercept over here 9.2 your answer may be slightly different from mine depend on how you read the graph so now we move on to part 4 you need to identify the volume using this simple equation since you have the concentration which is 9.2 dose is 500 mg divided by volume your volume will be 54.3 liter and then the next one to identify the clearance you use this equation k equal to clearance divided by volume your ke is 0.49 equal to clearance divided by volume 54.3 your clearance will be 26.6 liter per hour so we solve the five question and we will move on to the trapezoidal rule to make your calculation easier you can generate a table like this so i'm going to use the time point 0 and 0 0.5 as example to explain to you what is trapezoidal rule let's say i have 0 0 0.5 the concentration will be 9.2 and 7.7 .7. i'm going to calculate the area for this area under the curve the equation will be half c1 plus c2 multiplied by height plug in the value i will have 9.2 plus 7.7 .7 multiplied by 0 0.5 when i calculate the answer it should be it uh, should be 4.22 over here you have to do this for all the interval and you will get all the area if you sum this up you should get 19.15 but remember for the last concentration is going to move until infinity how do we calculate the area for the last concentration point that will be 0 0.2 divided by ke remember your ke is 0 0.49 so the last piece over here is 0 0.41 now add these two together and you should get your answer 19.56 okay so that is how we calculate AUC this question is about intravenous bolus administration you can now pause the video to attempt the questions the first part you need to recommend the bolus loading dose for this patient and the equation i will use is concentration equal to dose divided by volume the concentration will be 80 the dose divided by volume so volume is 0 0.5 multiplied by 70 and you work out the d it should be 2800 mg so this is question number one for question number two you need to calculate for how long it can sustain above 50 mg per liter so the targeted level previously was 80 so how long will it take to drop from 80 to 50 so first of all you need to construct the equation that will be 50 equal to 80 multiplied by ekt over here 
you need to solve the k before you can solve the t. For k, from the question we know that the half-life is 16 hour. So over here you can calculate the k. The k you will find it is 0 0.043. So once you identify the k, you are going to substitute back to the equation and then you can solve the t now. With that, I'm sure you're able to solve the question. The t will be 10.9 hour. So it will sustain for another 10.9 hour before it go below the 50 mg per liter level. In question number 3, we have two different concentrations. So one is two hour, one is four hour, and this is 82, that is uh, 64. So over here, we need to identify what is the concentration at 12 hour later. So first of all, I'm going to calculate the Ke using these two information over here. So ln 64, minus ln 82 that will be 4 minus 2 calculating the ke that will be 0 0.125 so that is my first information to calculate the concentration here i will use c12 is equal to c4 multiplied by ek8 why it is 8 hour over here because of the interval that will be C12 equal to 64 multiplied by E, 0 0.125 multiplied by 8. With that, my answer will be 23.7. That's it for question 3. I hope you are familiar with intravenous bolus administration. From this question onwards, we will practice the calculation for intravenous infusion administration. Now you can pause the video to attempt the questions. To solve this question, you need to sketch out the graph to get a better picture what is happening. This is 2 hour. You have a concentration t equal to 3 and a concentration t equal to 6. That will be 16 and 5. So first of all, I will need to solve the Ke. You can use the ln C2 minus ln C1 equation divided by T2 minus T1. Over here, I'm going to use a different method. There will be 5 equal to 16 multiplied by EK3. So this is actually C6 equal to C3 multiplied by EK3. So over here, I will need to find the K. The 3 is the interval between the two concentration. So over here, you should able to find out the Ke is 0 0.39. So this is the first answer. And for the part two, you need to find volume. In order for you to find the volume, you must remember this equation, K equal to clearance divided by volume. Over here, you have K, but you can find clearance from the information over here. So the equation for me to identify the clearance is C equal to salt factor infusion rate Y minus K time of infusion E minus K time minus time of infusion. Over here, I need to identify the infusion rate. It is given in the question 10 mg per minute that will be equivalent to 600 mg per hour. Always remember, infusion rate is always in hour. So salt factor is not given, we assume it's 1. And over here, I'm going to use 16 as my example. 16 is equal to 600. And the clearance, I need to identify E minus 0 0.39 multiplied by 2. The infusion time is 2 hour. E minus 0.39 time point number 3 minus 2 hour infusion so solve the clearance you will get 13.75 liter per hour now we have both 
K and CL. You can calculate the volume easily using K, CL over volume, 0 0.39 is equal to 13.75 divided by V. V will be 35.3 liter. So that is volume. Okay, part three. Part three, you need to identify the infusion rate for you to achieve 20 mg per liter. So this is a steady state. You need to use CSS equal to SIR divided by clearance. The target is 20. Source factor is one infusion rate unknown. The clearance 13.75. So easily you can identify the infusion rate should be 275 mg per hour. So that's it for this question. This question is a bit longer. We have five questions in total. I will first explain the three questions and then follow up by the other two questions later. You can now pause the video to attempt the questions. For part one, you need to identify the profile using population kinetic equation. For clearance, it is 80 kg multiplied by 0 0.04 and there is also a factor of 0 0.8 you should include because the patient is suffering from COAD. The answer for this will be 2.56 liter per hour. While for volume of distribution is 0 0.48 multiplied by 80, that is 38.4 liter. The last one, the KE, you can calculate using clearance divided by volume that will be 0, uh, 2.56, 2.56 divided by 38.4. The KE will be 0 0.067. So easily you can identify all this. And question number two, you need to recommend the bolus loading dose as well as infusion to maintain the level at 10 mg per liter. So for bolus, that will be concentration, sort factor, dose divided by volume. For aminophthalene to theophthalene, there's a sort factor of 0 0.79. So remember, you have to include the sort factor. The target is 10, 0 0.79 multiplied by D. The volume estimated is 38.4. The, the recommended amount will be 486 mg for the bolus loading dose. To maintain the level at 10 mg per liter, that will be CSS SIR divided by clearance. The target is 10, sort factor 0 0.79, infusion rate, clearance is 2.56, the infusion rate should be 32.1 mg per hour. Okay. So move on to question number three. For question number three, it is a bit longer because we are combining two different doses. We have a bolus followed by a continuous infusion. The graph you should see will be something like this. This is from the bolus and you have a continuous infusion and then Combine these two, you need to find what is the concentration at 6 hours later. So let us try to solve this question. The equation is a bit longer. The concentration at 6 hours will be the bolus EKT plus the infusion IR over clearance 1 minus EK time of infusion. Over here, sort factor 0 0.79, multiply the dose, 400, divide by the volume, 38.4, multiply by E, K, 0 0.067, multiply by 6, plus 0 0.79, and infusion rate of 40, divide by clearance, the clearance is uh, 2.56, 
y minus 0 0.067 multiplied by 6 so over here you should get 5.51 plus 4.07 the final answer the concentration is 9.58 okay I hope you can understand up to this part question 4 and 5 to test your understanding for continuous steady state infusion you can pause the video to attempt the questions for question number four your patient is given the infusion of 40 mg per hour after some time it will reach the steady state and the measurement for the level will be 15 mg per liter so over here we need to identify what is the actual clearance in order to calculate that we use CSS SIR divided by clearance the measured concentration is 15 sort factor 0.79 multiplied by infusion rate and the clearance over here we can find the clearance is 2.1 liter per hour for question number five you need to target the concentration at 10 mg per liter so using the actual clearance in this case same equation over here the target is 10 sort factor 0.79 infusion rate unknown and the actual clearance is 2.1 solving this your answer will be 26.6 mg per hour so that's all for our practice question i hope you have learned and improve your understanding for the calculation thank you very much